So we've got six engines, carries three crew, it's got two fins, one wing, and no fuselage. Yep, sounds perfect. Watch how I made my kit of the Arado 555 flying wing bomber right here on Gary's stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today indeed is build day of kit of the week. That kit is the Arado E555 model one in 170 second scale from Revel. Now, if you just wanna know what you get inside the box uh, because you're thinking of getting hold of one, there's already a box opening video available on my channel. If you've got one and you want to know how to put it together, this is very much the video for you. If you like anything you see on my channel, do please remember, give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. And of course, if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published. And of course, if you'd like to offer a bit more concrete support, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online affiliate programs. This kit was very kindly donated as a mystery box by Nick Johnson. So Nick, thank you very much for sending this, my friend. I really enjoyed it. Hope you do too. So let's make a start and have a look at how to build the Arado E555 in one 70 second scale from Revel. Right, we're going to start off with the cockpit area. So first thing we're gonna do is get some seats. Get some seats and they go in, they kind of slot in here, like so. Dab a little bit of glue behind there. I imagine by this stage, potentially, these would have been ejection seats. I would have thought they don't look like it, they probably would have been ejection seats, anyway. Then the control yoke goes on this side of the aircraft. The captain traditionally sitting in the left hand seat. And if there's only one pilot, that's normally where they would sit. Excellent. And then the navigation navigation or bomb aiming probably bomb aiming equipment isn't it goes here like so and there's some instruments that go here the instrument panel and then Back here we have the flight engineer's seat. Now on the bottom half of the cabin, I've already put in the rudder pedals. I'm now going to add what I suppose are radio racks at the back of the cabin. Right, so this is the finished cockpit area. As you can see, um, get a pointer for you here. I've um, painted the seats in sort of a leatherish brown and painted some straps in onto the chairs as well. It's given this a rough wash of just a black wash really. Um, just pulls up some stuff. Some detail. Uh, I've put the instruments in with black and then brushed over, dry brushed over them. Likewise, the 
instruments here for the flight engineer come navigator. I just made, <laughs> made all these up, obviously, what, whether or not they'd be red and yellow, I've no idea. I'm going to guess red buttons would be something like a fire extinguisher, yellow, maybe fuel cut off. I don't know. Who knows? Um, and then in the base here, we've got the radio sets that I've painted black and again dry brushed. And then, of course, as I mentioned before, the rudder pedals here. So it's all ready for the cockpit to go into the kit. Okay, there we go. It just sits in there. Add a little bit of glue and that is done. Next thing I'm going to do is put this forward gun turret on. So we put the mounting for it in first. Now, the instructions say you can put this the gun in gently and then you can then sort of glue it on it and, and don't glue anything because then you can move it later and I'm not bothered about that. So I'm going to have the gun facing forward because it is in the artwork, which means I need that, that little knob there at the back. I am going to put some glue in there. Some glue in there and there. Then I can fit the turret like so. Can fit the turret like so? He said, take two. There we go. And again, I'll put some glue in there just to make sure it stays put. The periscope for the gunner comes with a plastic, grey plastic part here, and then a clear part that sits into it. The idea is you can actually have it down or up. Um, I'm going to have it up in the use position. What I will have to do is I'm put a bit of masking fluid over part of this transparent part so that it doesn't get all get painted. I'll spray it up later on. But you can have it um, sort of retracted into the aircraft as well if you like. Right, the tail gun barbette. Um, this little triangly stumpy thing goes at the bottom and then the gun goes that way. Okay. You'll see there's like a half moon peg here. That fits this so you know which way up it goes, which is very useful. Again, you can have you can have this moving up and down, left and right. I'm not interested in all that nonsense. So I'm going to just glue everything in place. The instructions say to put 16 grams of weight on each wing here. I have got uh, 20 grams. So. Okay. 20 grams of do that on each side. And then the final thing to do is put the gun barbette in here. Then we can put the two halves of the wing body, call it what you like, together. And just go around taping it up into place as you go. The fins, or vertical stabilizers, if you will, come in halves. They just get glued together and tape, tape them up and extra thin all round as usual. The vertical fin rudder assembly. Eventually slides into place like so. 
there's an instrument cluster that goes up here in the top of the cockpit. Then when it is dry, the canopy piece can go in, again using the crystal magic to hold it in place. Now we're going to leave that um, to dry for quite a long time. There is a little window panel here that um, you can put in as well and drop that in. But the front, the nose section, which is uh, over here somewhere, which is here. I'll wait until this is dry, then I can make sure it's flat there before putting the final nose section piece in. Then uh, we'll be ready to spray this and also separately make the engines. So the engine stack, the six, yes, count them, six jet engines are stacked in pairs, but it all comes as one solid piece here. Just glue them together, clamp them up to make sure they're all set nice and tight. For each of these engines, there's a inlet, there's a an exhaust that goes down the other end, and just clip that in, and do the other five. There we go. And do the other five. This is the core, of course, is the point at which you discover that the these exhausts have to go in before you put these two halves together because they won't fit in otherwise they just will not go in so they have to be done before you put the two halves together That's what you like about my videos. See, I make lots of mistakes too. And I don't think I'm an idiot. Well, I do actually sometimes, but I don't think I'm that stupid. I'm fairly good at following instructions. But when the instructions don't actually tell you, put all these in first, then you can close it up. There we go. There we go. No harm. Nothing to see here. I'll just close those up again. Of course, I can. Bit of tape. Bit of glue. Jobs are good. One. Okay. Quick catch up of where we are. We. I've. Um, done some filling along these seam lines on the leading edges because they're quite exposed but the rest of the fit is actually really good so i've um sprayed the whole thing in gray just to double check seams and everything like that and everything that's good what i'll do now is paint uh i'll prime the underside in white first then put on the yellow coat then i can just mask off the surfaces and then spray the interior colors into these pieces okay that's a good start and then of course once that's all done i can put the camouflage on the top do the engines and the kit's finished what more is there to do all right so i'm now going to spray on some uh tamir xf there's a mixture of uh, xf24 dark gray with a bit of xf50 field blue in it kind of um approximates to our m75 so anyway just pop just going to paint on a few sort of markings And we have to do the same over the engine compartments, of course. Oh, 
with everything else done, I can put the engines on top of the wing. And it's time we can start putting decals on as well. And this is my favourite bit, I think, because it's when, as I always say, this is when a kit comes to life for me. why that has come up but we will cure that let's get this right first okay. that's where we want it and then just gently not just into place there we go like so I've decided to go for these later roundels because this is allegedly a 1948 aircraft if we had indeed have captured one it wouldn't be till about 48 and by 48 we were as far as i'm aware using these types of decals uh, uh, roundels rather so that's what i think we would have put onto a captured aircraft and the main gear bogies uh, have two double wheels each so just put them through Make sure if, you, if you've done any um, get, taking them off the frames and sanding since I paint them on the frame generally speaking. So always make sure that the sanded bit is down. I can always just touch those up. And um, yeah, just go through those and set up the wheels. And each leg has a scissor that fits over the uh, the joint here, the compression scissor on the Olio. The undercarriage leg goes into this hole here and then rests in the cradle of those two. Right, so, then there's a, a strut that comes up here. I um, must say this is beautifully designed for something that never actually you know, took off. The strap goes into that little pocket there and then clips just underneath that point there like so. Okay, so just underneath that little collar where the oleo scissor attaches, there's like a. Actually, I'll revise that slightly. You see, you see on the leg here, there's this like double band. Yeah, that is where this strut has to go. If, you, if it goes right up against this collar, then it doesn't sit straight. It has to get in this gap here and then it will the leg will sit straight now if like me you've left the nose gear leg out the, the instructions say to put this in right at the very beginning and I hate doing that and I don't think you need to so what I've done is I've 
kind of sanded down on an angle the pins the locator pins i'm hoping i can get these in somehow so there we go um i did have to did have to shave this uh, side of the axle a bit more than i wanted to but this side of the axle is okay and there's a locator pin anyway so that's in place now i need the bracing arm to go in okay so it goes into again goes into a pocket down the bottom then it does it go does it go to the end of that yeah that's it that's it sits on the end of that um sort of spiky bit there so okay i'm going to leave the undercarriage to set um properly <laughs> overnight or i think and then i'll put the bombay doors on the undercarriage doors on last few bits and pieces and we'll be finished the main gear doors uh come as one piece assuming i guess that you're actually going to have the door closed um, okay so that's cool now the actual doors themselves are um, they they fold up slightly at an angle i'll um, get them roughly where they should be and i'll show you what i mean three but this is supposed to be these doors are supposed to be at 45 degrees ish kind of like that but they don't want to be like that so what I'm going to do is just tack some cement along here and hold it in place. I'm going to use some um, quick drying cement and see if we can get that roughly right. It's a bit of a pain in the backside, to be fair. It is quite a pain in the backside to do this. But anyway, let's see if we can get that to sit roughly at the right angle. If you get them to the right angle, so you're happy with the angle and you're happy that both of them are the same, then just sort of tape them up and then maybe run another little bit of glue along there and then leave them alone until they're completely set. So with the main gear doors, we put them into place here. So, and then we get the, the actuator leg goes into its slot at the bottom there and then it goes into the connection point in there there it is finished the arado e555 version one in fact the six engined flying wing bomber proposal that never actually made it beyond the paper stage but you know what this is a really nice kit it's got plenty of detail which i guess is taken from other kits so you know arado did this this way before they would probably do it again and so on and so forth it's convincing as an aircraft it's convincing as a kit of something that germans could have flown had they been around you know a couple of years later into the war um, I think it's pretty convincing as a captured aircraft. I'm very, very happy with the REF additions. Um, and I'm very happy with the camouflage scheme on the top. Um, it went down exceptionally well with a very nice paintbrush, spray brush. So altogether, extremely happy. If you're thinking about doing something a bit what if, then I can thoroughly recommend this Revel kit as fun to build not too difficult to build um, but full of potential for fun things there we have it i really enjoyed making this i think it's a great kit it goes together very well i enjoyed playing with the color scheme as well it's an unfussy build of a really interesting aircraft so thank you very much revel for making it um if you've enjoyed this and i hope you have please do remember Give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below if you'd be so kind because every like counts. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published. 
Thank you so very much for watching today. Hope to see you again very soon. Take good care now and goodbye.